This first production possibilities curve is going to represent constant opportunity cost. When we refer to constant opportunity cost, the resources used to produce both goods are identical. In this case, opportunity cost does not change with production. This is not a realistic reflection of the entire economy, but it can represent the production of some goods. In this example, we're going to use a Mexican restaurant that makes tacos and burritos. And remember, economics is the study of how societies manage their scarce resources and the resources used to make tacos and burritos are the same. Both require beef, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, etc. So let's say that in any given hour, this restaurant can make all of the possibilities that you see on this, on this graph. For tacos, represents the vertical line. We've got 4, 3, 2, 1. And burritos represents the horizontal line, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. But let's just say, for the fun of it, that this restaurant decides to focus all of their time, effort, energy on making tacos instead of burritos. So we would be at this point right here, and that would be four. So I'd like you to shade, or at least darken this circle right here by the fourth taco. And that means I'm making zero burritos. But let's be realistic here. For a restaurant to be successful, especially a Mexican restaurant, they may want to make more than just tacos. They may want to make a burrito or two every now and then. So let's say they want to expand their horizons. They want to move from making zero burritos to, let's say, one. Well, what would the opportunity cost of that be? Well, the opportunity cost to produce one burrito would result in the cost of one taco. So watch what I do here. I kind of plot this point. And I connect these dots all the way down. Kind of gives us an idea where we're going, what we're doing. And, uh, and let's say you, you want to keep making more burritos. These burritos end up being a, a big fan favorite for your restaurant. And you have to figure out, well, what am I going to give up? I have to give up another taco, obviously. So the opportunity to, to uh, the opportunity cost to produce another burrito to go from one to two is going to cost you an additional taco. And I'm gonna make this point here. And we can continue to do this all the way through to make the third burrito. You will have to give up another taco. And let's say all of a sudden these burritos just end up becoming, you know, in demand more than anything. And that's all your, your restaurant wants. Well, then you would be willing to give up that, that only that, that one taco you're making, all right, and just go all the way to the fourth burrito. And I'm going to connect these lines, or these dots, excuse me. And we refer to this as a linear linear line when we deal with constant opportunity cost. So as I moved from one taco to an additional burrito, I continued to move this way. I was willing to give up one taco in order to, to have that one burrito. So, if I had to fill in the blank here, the opportunity cost to produce one burrito will cost one taco. The second production possibilities curve is going to represent increasing opportunity cost. When we refer to increasing opportunity cost, the resources used to produce both goods are not identical. In this case, the economy foregoes increasing amounts of one good when producing more of the other. 
Let's say a country produces chairs and airplanes. Remember, economics is the study of how societies manage their scarce resources and the resources used to make chairs and airplanes are not the same. Well, we start this graph pretty similar to how we started our constant opportunity cost graph. We take a look at what our production possibilities are. We're producing chairs and airplanes, which are not identical. They're not burritos and tacos, so the resources are different. And we take a look at what our per units of production would be or could be. Now, we could produce 40, 37, 27, 15 chairs or 1, 2, 3, 4 airplanes. Well, let's start this graph similar to how we started our previous graph. We're going to start off with all of our time, effort, energy being focused on chairs, which would be a production of 40 chairs and zero airplanes. Well, let's say we want to actually produce the first airplane. Well, what do we do? We find our first unit, which would be one here, and the cost would be 40 minus 37 would be three chairs. Find our point and we bring this all the way down. We continue to go through this process. Uh, we want to make more airplanes. What would the cost of chairs would be if we went from the first airplane to the second airplane? We find our next unit of production. 37 minus 27 would be 10. So our cost would be 10 chairs because we are giving up 10 additional chairs to produce one more airplane. We decide to produce the third airplane 27 minus 15 would be 12. So the cost of producing the third airplane, one additional airplane, would be a total of 12 chairs. And if we continue to produce more airplanes, to produce the fourth airplane, uh, one more airplane would be 15 chairs that we would give up. We're going to connect. These dots again. And when we refer to increasing opportunity costs, we refer to this as a convex curve, a curve that bows out. So as you can see, when we move from the first airplane to the second to the third to the fourth in regards to production we are increasing our opportunity cost of chairs from 3 to 10 to 12 to 15. This clearly demonstrates the economic concept of increasing opportunity costs. The third production possibilities curve is going to represent decreasing opportunity cost. In this case, opportunity cost actually decreases with greater production. While opportunity cost can decrease in limited circumstances, this is unlikely to happen for the economy as a whole. Uh, and just for the record, uh, decreasing opportunity cost really doesn't exist, and it's, it's something that you are rarely, if never, going to see in the AP Economics curriculum, but we're going to learn it anyway, uh, just so you understand it. Uh, and, and we're going to take a look at the, the same graph and per units of production from increasing opportunity costs. And as you can see, I already have a, a line drawn here. Uh, we refer to this as a, as a concave line, a line that kind of bows in. And it's easier that I actually have this drawn uh, before I kind of plot points and show you why decreasing opportunity costs really doesn't exist at all. Uh, well, let's take a look here. Let's say if we started once again with, uh, with all of our time and energy producing 40 chairs and zero airplanes. Uh, let's, let's say if we 
we uh, we want to uh, attempt to make the first airplane. Uh, e even if we wanted to give up some chairs, as you can see, as I'm as I'm plotting these points down, uh, I'm not even on the per unit of production for airplanes. It's like it's like a big question mark here. Uh, what part of an airplane, if any, is being produced at at this point? So I'm giving up three chairs, but I'm not getting an airplane in return. Uh, if I continue to go here from 37 to, to 27, you know, I'm giving up, you know, more chairs, but am I really getting anything in return? I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting any airplanes. If I go from 27 to 15, uh, once again, you know, my per, my per unit, you know, costs, you know, I'm giving up. I'm giving up chairs. I'm giving up more chairs, and, and I'm not getting... Uh, anything in return in regards to airplanes. So uh, this is an example of what we call decreasing opportunity costs. Once again, it, it really doesn't exist.